Hello everyone, welcome to the second video for Math 235. Uh, in this video we are going to introduce the concept of a limit. Uh, limits are the most basic tool in calculus. In fact, they are the complete foundation for everything else in which we are going to be doing in this course. So this is a very important idea that we'll be spending some time on. Okay, so let's start off with an example. So here's a, a nice rational function, x cubed plus 2x squared minus 5x plus 2 divided by x minus 1. And what we, we want to think about with this function is what happens to it as we get closer and closer to the value x equals 1. So the first thing to note here is that because we're dividing by x minus 1 on the bottom, we can't actually just plug 1 into this function, right? In fact, the value, if we tried to plug 1 into this function, it does not exist. 1 is not in the domain for this rational function. But every other real value of x is, right? We can plug anything else into there, in for x there, except for, for 1, and we're not going to be dividing by 0, and so that's completely legal. And so it makes it interesting to think about, well, what happens around 1? If we don't plug in exactly 1, but a little something a little bit off from 1, what's happening with this function. So simplest thing to do is let's just start creating a table of values. So if I want to be close to 1.9, that's pretty close to 1. And if we plug that in, we get that the value of the rational function there is 1.51. If we get closer, 0.99, then we get the function value is 1.9501. If we get even closer, plug in 0.999, when we see the value of the function is 1.995001. And if we get even a little bit closer, so 0 0.9999, now we're at 1.99950, blah, 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 blah. And so as we get closer and closer to 1 in our x values, it looks like our function is getting closer and closer to 2. So we've been looking at values that are less than 1. Uh, we can also be close to 1, but bigger than 1. So let's look at that as well. So if we plug in 1.1, so that's 1 tenth away, we get 2.51. If we plug in 1.01, we're at 2.0501. 0 .001, 1 1.001 gives us 2.005001. So you can see as we get closer, as the number of zeros that we're putting before we put a 1 after the decimal place, it seems like we're getting more zeros on the other side. And so 1.0001 gives us 2.00050. So on both of these sides, if we're a little bit smaller than 1, the values are going upwards towards 2. And if we're a little bit bigger than 1, the values are just slightly more than 2. And the closer we get to 1 from, from above, it seems like the values are getting closer to 2. So, as we've been talking about, it seems as if we get closer to 1, both from the top and from the bottom, both from values less than 1 and from values bigger than 1, it seems like the value of f of x gets closer and closer to 2. And so here's a plot of that function. And as you can see, we have a circle at x equals 1. Uh, that's denoting that we can't actually get a value there. But on either side, we have this nice kind of smooth curve that's leading right towards the y value 2. And so this gets us to the intuitive idea of, of a limit, right? And so the idea is, is if as x gets closer and closer to the value of a, so we're thinking about a is relating to x, and the values of the, f all the values of f of x get closer and closer to some value l. So f of x is relating to l. Then what we say is that the limit of f of x is x approaches a equals l. Right, so as the x values get close to a, the y values, the values of the function f of x, those are all getting closer to l. So in our last 
uh, in our last example, we were looking at, in this rational function, as our values got closer and closer to 1, the, func the values of the function got closer and closer to 2. And so we will say the limit of this function as x approaches 1 equals 2. Okay, so now let's look at another rational function. So now we have x squared plus x plus 1 divided by x minus 2 quantity squared. And we're gonna, this time we're going to look at it as x goes to 2. So again, 2 is not in the domain of this rational function, so we can actually plug in 2, but that's the only x value that we can't plug in. Every other x value we can, we can plug in, we, we can get a value out of this function. And so we can be as close to 2 as we want, so long as we aren't exactly at 2, we can get some value for this function. So let's do the same thing we had we did before. Let's look at values. Let's actually plug in values and see what happens. So if I plug in 1.9, the value of the function here is 651. If I do 1.99, it's over 69,000. If we do 1.999, so add one more 9 to the end of that, all of a sudden we're almost at 7 million. What about if we plug in things that are a little bit bigger than 2? Well, 2.1, that's 751. 2.01 is over 70,000. 2.001, that's over 7 million. So what looks to be happening here? Well, in both cases here, as x is getting closer and closer to 2, these are just getting bigger and bigger. And the exact same thing is happening for the values when x is a little bit bigger than 2. And so this is a graph of this function. You can see, when we look at the graph, we can see the same thing happening that we saw in the table of values. Um, in fact, the y scale here, it's really big. The bottom is at 0, the top's at 100. As you can see on both sides, as the x values get closer and closer to 2, the y values shoot up. And it happens on both sides as even if we're a little bit bigger on the right and we're moving closer to 2, the function that way shoots up as well. Okay, and so this is going to be the idea of what we call an infinite limit. And so if when x goes to a, the values of f of x get bigger and bigger, and they don't ever cap off, there's no upper bound to that, then we're going to say that limit is equal to infinity. So for our example, as x goes to 2, for this rational function, because on both sides the value of the function is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, we're going to say the value of the limit is infinity. Okay, and so here's, here's our limit, here's our function. You can see that I've added in this dashed red line in between at x equals 2. And as if we were to scale this up, make the y-axis bigger and bigger and bigger, what would happen is, is as the values get closer to 2, it would start hugging this dotted red line tighter and tighter and tighter. And so this dotted red line is, is kind of telling us this is where the function is tending to. And so it has a special name. It's called a vertical asymptote. So the vertical asymptote, it's saying the function, or really the graph of the function, is... approaching this line, getting closer and closer to this line as x goes to 2. Okay, so now let's think about a piecewise function. So in a piecewise function, um, the, how the rule that we use to figure out the function depends on what the x values are. So when x is, for this piecewise function, when x is less than minus 1, we're going to use the line 2x plus 3. If x is equal to minus 1, it just has the value of 2. And if x is bigger than minus 1, then it has, uh, it's going to be the value minus x plus 2, right? And so if I wanted to say what is f of minus 4 for this function, well, minus 4 is less than minus 1. And so I'm going to use that line to figure out its value, so it would be 2 times minus 4 plus 3. 
So that's minus 8 plus 3 gives me minus 5. Um, if I wanted to know what the value of this function was at, say, 7, well, 7 is bigger than minus 1. And so I'm going to use that function to get my values. And so if I plug it in here, I have minus 7 plus 2. Minus 7 plus 2, that's also going to give me minus 5. That was just complete dumb luck on my part, picking two x values that gave me the same y value. So another important value to, to think about plugging in is if I plug in just minus 1 itself, and it's saying when x is exactly minus 1, then the function value is just 2. Okay, so here is a graph of this piecewise function. And as we can see here, all the action here is happening at the value x equals minus 1. So let's take a look at this. Um, well, if you notice, you know, because this is a piecewise function, there's different functions on the left of minus 1 than there is on the, minus, uh, on the right of minus 1, which is different than what happens exactly at minus 1. Um, so it kind of makes sense to break this down and look at it uh, each side by themselves. And so this gives us the idea of what's called a one-sided limit. So on a one-sided limit, we're only going to imagine what's happening to one side, on one side of it. Right? So if we're approaching minus 1 from the left, we're going to ignore everything that's happening on the right of minus 1. So I've added this gray box over to everything to the right of minus 1 because we don't care about that at all right now. All we are thinking about is what, what's happening as we're going to minus 1 from the left. And as you can see, if we're going to minus 1 from the left, we're traveling up this line right here, and it's going to a y value of 1. And so we're going to say, to say that, to say that this, this value as we approach from the left goes to 1, we're going to say the limit is x goes to minus 1, and then if you look, we've added in this minus sign. This minus sign is saying that we are only approaching from the left. Only from the left. Minus is saying we're using numbers that are smallest for minus 1. And so as we go to minus 1 from the left, the function is approaching 1. What about if we reverse course and think about only approaching minus 1 from the right. So now we've darkened off everything to the left of minus 1, and we're just focusing in on the right side of minus 1. And as we get closer and closer to minus 1 from the right, the y values are getting closer and closer to y equals 3. And so to say that, we'll say that the, the value of the limit as we approach from the right and instead of using a minus sign to say that we're coming from the right, we're using a plus sign. So the plus sign is, is saying, signifying that we're only from the right. And so then the value of the limit as we approach only from the right equals 3. So we have the value from the left is going to 1. The value from the right is going to 3. Well, for our definition of a limit, all as we get closer to minus 1, if it had a value of a limit there, all the values together would have to be going to the same place. But on one side, the values are getting close to 1. On the other side, they're getting close to 3. There's no one single value that everything is getting closer to. And so since these two one-sided limits are not equal, they're not all going to the same place we're going to say that the limit here does not exist. So the limit as we approach minus 1 of this function does not exist because one side's going to 1, the other side's going to 3. They're not all going to the same number. Okay, so in general, when x is going to a, if either the value of f of x does not approach one single value, so it could be approaching two different ones, it could be approaching a whole lots of different values, or if f of x if both sides are not both going to either plus infinity or minus infinity, then we're going to say that the value of the limit does not exist. 
And to be extra careful for the second one is if the limit as x goes to a, say, from the left of f of x is minus infinity, but the limit as x goes to a from the right is positive infinity. And so if a is right there, we're kind of talking about some function that looks kind of like that, drawn a nice asymptote. Um, this is another case where we're going to say this limit does not exist. Because going to plus positive infinity on one side and minus infinity on the other side, that's two different directions. Does not exist. Okay, so here's another example. So another piecewise function. We're just going to be looking at the graph here. Okay, so first question, all the action here is happening at 2. So what's happening to this as we go to 2 from the left? So same as before, we're going to box out everything that's to the right of 2, only focusing on what's happening to the left of 2. And as you can see, as we go from the left, we're going straight down to this value, which looks to be 3. And so the value of this one-sided limit is 3. What happens if we look at this from going to the right? So we're going to completely ignore what happens to the left of 2. And it's from the right, we see the function is still going to 3. And so the limit as we approach 2 from the right is equal to 3. Now in this case, as we go from the left or right, they're both going to the same value, 3. And so we're going to say that the limit of the function as x goes to 2 equals 3. So the two one-sided limits, these agree. And so then that means that that's also the value of the whole limit coming from both sides together. Now, final thing to note, that what is the actual value of the function here? If I actually plug in 2, what do I get from this function? Well, it, its y value is 2 there. That's, that's what the dot there represents. Uh, but the limit of the function is not equal to 2. So we can have a function who has a limit coming from both sides that agree, in this case it's 3, but that's not equal to the value of the function there. Right? And this really boils down to the fact that when you're looking at a limit, the limit doesn't actually care what's happening exactly at the value. It doesn't care what's happening exactly at 2. It's asking about what happens when you're close to 2, but not equal to 2. Okay, here's one last example. For the video. So this one's quite a bit funkier. So first, what's happening as we go to 1.5 from the left? So on the left side, that's where we have this really pretty thing that then just shoots downwards. Well, if it's shooting downwards and we even have an asymptote there, what's that mean? That means the limit's going to minus infinity. What if we go to 1.5 from the right? Well, from the 1.5 from the right, that's where we have this nice kind of sign-shaped curve going on in some case. And it looks like from the right, it's approaching the value 3. So we're going to say the limit as we approach from the right is 3. Now on the one side, the limit's going to minus infinity. On the other side, the limit's going to 3. So what is the actual value of the limit of this function? It does not exist as we approach 1.5. One side's going to minus infinity, the other side's going to 3. They're not all going to the same place. So the limit does not exist. So finally, what's the actual value of the function at 1.5? If I plug in 1.5 into this function, what is the function going to spit out? Well, as we look at x equals 1.5, you 
it's got a dot there at 1, so that means the value of the function at 1.5 equals 1. That is all for this video. I will see you again soon.